Hello, Fiber Friends! And... Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> everyone! I was going to say everyone! <laughs> we got all set up. So, we have a double stream today. My friend Shannon is here, so Shannon's going to introduce herself. We got all set up. So, we Hold have on. a double One sec. stream. Hold on, I mute YouTube because it's going a little crazy. Hello! All right. There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am all, I had a little bit of internet troubles this morning. But I've, and I've got my embroidery cape and I'm ready to go. <laughs> that embroidery looks amazing. Yeah, it's, um, it's my first time embroidering anything and it's, it's coming along. It's, uh, I'm not going to show you the back because the back is a little bit embarrassing i'm sure it's fine i guess it's my first time embroidering anything <laughs> okay we have um a new setup today so we should be able to put some comments on the screen the whole idea today is that we're just going to hang out and chat and craft and have some fun <laughs> Uh, the sort of overarching umbrella theme is Cape Timber. Um, so a lot of us are working on capes. I'm working on my cape that I started for last year's Cape Timber. It's not done yet. <laughs> it's okay. It's normal. It's normal. <laughs> you're, you're in good company. I'm very sure of this. My um, weaving is taking much longer than I estimated it would. And it's also the reason why my camera, I'll explain it, why my camera is a little bit different. The screen is over here. So if I'm looking at comments or Shannon, I'm looking over there. Um, but the camera is up here. And the reason I separated it, oops, the reason I separated it is because I will be weaving. And I have this weighted tapestry beater so that I can really like get everything tucked in there firmly so that the locks don't fall out of the fabric when it's finished. You'll see in a moment. But I realized when I'm beating down my <laughs> locks and my yarn into the weave, it was shaking the whole table. And every time I did that, the camera was shaking. <laughs> so I had to put the camera on a separate tripod. So I'm looking in all the different ways and it probably looks silly, but I think that's part of the whole live stream, right? Like uh, trying to multitask everything and I'm yep. getting a lot of affirming comments telling me that it's normal that the back of my um, piece looks a little bit chaotic. So that's encouraging. Thank you guys. <laughs> I needed that. Yes. Okay. Let's look at some comments because this is part of our new setup. We can respond to comments. So, total newbie spinner. And today, your first antique wheel is oiled up and running. That is so exciting. Congratulations on your new wheel, new to you. And congratulations that you got an antique going again. That is the coolest. I'll definitely say happy spinning. <laughs> and... I've never yet managed to attend a live chat. Welcome, Karen. I'm so glad oh, you're here. Amazing. Nice, Karen. She words for me regarding my embroidery. <laughs> okay, I'm getting there. Well, yep, here we go. <laughs> I am definitely not magic. I I think that would be an incredible superpower, actually. Hide all of your full sided like, embroidery. Hide all of the thread mess. <laughs> Watching from Yorkshire, England, carting some Dorset fleece. Is the Dorset local? <laughs> That's my question. I think that could be local. <laughs> that is awesome. Bobbing while you weave. Is this a <laughs> pun? Freaky Geek loves the puns, and I love the puns, too. 
Shannon, here's one for you. Don't worry about how the back looks. I've been embroidering for years. The back never looks pretty. You're good. That's good. That's good. I concur. <laughs> and we have people finished already. That's incredible. Oh we have a couple people that have already finished their cape that have been posting photos in Facebook. And I'm like, wow, you're so far ahead of me. But thank you for being so, so on track. It's amazing to see. It's very encouraging, I think, for the rest of us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm inspired. I'll try and get <laughs> caught up. <laughs> but I'm inspired. I love it. And for those of you that are finished, remember that you can, um, I'll put a post up on it about Facebook, but I would love to get some video submissions of all the capes in action, put a little montage together for the end of the event. That would be very fun for me. An antique woolen cape from work that someone dropped off and they already had similar ones. So you, oh, you got to take it home. That's very cool. Wow. I'm sure it's in good hands. <laughs> I love how when people like learn that you, you know, are into something, whether that's like fiber arts, like or sewing, or I mean, in my case, even like corgis, they just like anytime they see anything related to that, they know who to go to. So it's very fun when you become known as like the historic fashion person. And then everyone's like, Oh, look what I found. It's this antique garment. Do you want it? <laughs> That happened to my aunt in a funny way, my great aunt. Uh, she had like a little, it was just a little figurine of a frog. And she had it somewhere where people who came over guests saw it. It was on like a hutch or something near the dining room. And so everyone thought she loved frogs. And it was just a random little thing that she had. But uh, after decades of that, anytime someone thought, what should I give for a gift? It was all frog themed. So she ended up having frogs everywhere in her whole house. She had everything frog themed. And it was funny because it was that much. <laughs> It was just, people thought, oh, she likes frogs. So if anyone's confused, I'll just clarify. I really like spinning wheels. <laughs> Not just a coincidence. <laughs> okay, we have... Hello in Southern Il Indiana. Upstate New York, nice. we have people everywhere. Oh, we have someone who just moved cross country at the end of the month. And I just want to say, hey, I relate. I just moved myself. I literally just got this whole face behind me set up. I was gone abroad for three years and like came back after, well, after three and a half years in a global pandemic and uh didn't recognize half of my belongings and we're sitting in what was my bedroom. It's now this lovely crafting space. I just finished the video for it about uh, turning it into a sewing space. So that'll be out on my channel next week. If anyone wants to get more of a sneak peek of what's, you know, got some stuff going on behind me, that'll be out next week. So, but yeah, just want to say that's stressful and I relate hardcore. <laughs> We moved a year ago and it's still not finished. Yes. Purple owls. Purple owls are my other <laughs> my other thing. I got I got one at a fiber festival. I'm showing it off because I had it in um my video that I put up yesterday. It's a little I got it from the potter at the festival. She made this and it's um purple glaze there's a little owl and people were like what are you doing with that i'm using it to put um water for when i spin flax so i can wet spin and it'll be my little water dish and i like it because it's not very tippy it'll be kind of i don't think it would work for a supported spindle because the uh the owl has grooves and i think the tip would get stuck down in the groove oh, it has grooves <laughs> But I love purple owls. Oh, we've got some people from Sweden. Hello, Sweden. I was in Copenhagen. That's where I was the last three and a half years. So hello to all of my almost neighbors. That's fun. 
Saskatchewan, nice. Okay, I'm in Montreal right now, so I can relate with a couple of sectors of the demographic here. Oh, there we go. I'm trying to keep up with the comments. Oh, I think I'm doing a fantastic job. Also, there's a bunch of people from Sweden. Actually, there's like three comments. So, oh, oh cool. Yeah, very cool. A pin loom woven hood. What pin loom are you using? Is it vintage? Did you make it? I'd love to know. Let us know. Leave a comment. <laughs> what is this? Can you tell me who knows nothing about fiber arts? What is a pin loom? What is a pin loom? I have a pin loom I could hold up, actually. Um, a pin loom is a frame loom. So it, it's a frame. Sometimes they're square, sometimes they're rectangular. And it has little pins that stick up all around the edge. And then you basically create your warp and your weft over the pins. I feel like I've seen like and maybe even used like cheap plastic versions of this when I was a kid kind of thing. This is ringing a bell. I don't think I made any grandiose works of art on it, but okay. I, I have an image now in my head. Those sort of iconic ubiquitous plastic um, where you have those loops and everybody would make pot holders. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think that's the loops. Yeah. yeah. That is a pin loom. Yes. Okay. Very fun. Yes. Hello, Germany and Montana, Indiana. Oh, where in Germany? I want to know where in Germany. Pin looms are. Oh, we got two from Denmark. Hello. Hey, Mona. <laughs> Mona is working on a gorgeous cape that she's crocheting all of these little leaves to. And then she's going to sew the leaves onto the body of the cape. I've been seeing a lot of photos in Instagram and on the Facebook group. And she's got a couple of YouTube videos up on it. So I've been following along. And it's going to be very cute, Mona, Mona, when your cape is done. Very excited. Awesome. Yes. I got these earrings at the sheep show I went to. This is like my fresh event. So I'm all excited about all the things. This is the pin loom I have. This is a shameless self plug because I do sell these in my shop. <laughs> so there. Zoom loom. Is it zoom loom because you can go so fast or? It is actually because the way the pins are you wrap it a certain way so that you don't have to do as many over unders and so it mm -hmm. completes faster and you can make all kinds of like stacks and stacks of little squares it's great for leftover yarn um you can use it up making little squares make patchwork kind of blankets and quilts and things like that Oh, awesome. A triangle loom is also technically it's a pin loom and they can be huge, like seven feet across. Yeah. Many ends to weave in. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Hello, crowing hen. Welcome. Crowing hen is also working on a cape and made a cute video of uh, capes for little felted chickens. Oh my gosh, I saw those, those were adorable. I only saw the photo on the Discord, but they were adorable. Crowing Hen has a YouTube channel as well, so you can go and check it out. I don't think it'll let, uh, I don't think it'll let you post a comment if there's a link in it, um, but you can see oh, Crowing Hen in the chat there, so. Nice. Ah, Dusseldorf. I uh, will not be in Dusseldorf this year, but I have been there I, over Christmas in 2012. I worked at the Apollo Theater for a, a few months there, and I did enjoy the Dusseldorf area. We were right under, tucked under that little bridge, the name I forget, but it's very fun. The theater is like right under the bridge, like in that little triangle that gets made as the bridge is taking off along the Rhine. It's very adorable. I did enjoy my time in Dusseldorf, but I won't be there. Won't be there this year, at least uh, not unless something surprising comes up. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Oh, my leaves are getting 
strange sizes. They're very ununiform. It's nature, right? They're allowed to be ununiform. I would say, I would say nature does what nature wants. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Let's try this. I'm going to dip my camera down so people can see what I'm weaving if they're interested in seeing what I'm weaving. Oh, this yeah, is a historic kind of, um, okay. Close your eyes if movement bothers you because it's going to move for a second. Here we go. There it is. All right, and now it's done. Open your eyes. <laughs> so, sleep. yeah, it is oh, very tedious. <laughs> it's lock weaving. This is based on Verfelder, which is a type of trade cloak that was woven in Iceland. Um, I'll have to go look at my notes to get the dates for sure, unless someone knows the dates and wants to put them in the chat. But kind of Viking Age and even later than Viking Age, um, they became trendy when the king of Norway saw one, liked it, bought it, and then it kicked off this trend and everybody wanted these lock woven, um, I think technically they would be cloaks because they went, they would be uh, larger, they'd go to the floor. Um, <laughs> I like floof. <laughs> I mean, it does look, it looks so, so cozy. It looks really enjoyable. It's interesting. Um, I had to do, there's, I think there's only one extant example of uh, cloak surviving. However, there's written record of them because they were trade cloaks. And so they had, uh, they had specific, I should do this and then this. They had specific standards that they had to meet because they were traded like currency. Um, and so they had to be a certain size. They had to have a certain amount of pile. They had to have pile being the stuff that sticks up as opposed to the background fabric, which is just the flat fabric. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, they, had all these specifics that they had to um, meet these standards for. And so that gives us some interesting information to be able to replicate it. And that's where I thought, ooh, I want to replicate that. And I knew it was very labor intensive and would take me forever. Um, I just put this back through the same shed because I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would take me forever. So I was like, I'll just do a collar and not a full cloak. Well, <laughs> even so, even so, it's a very laborious. Um, so you it, have a new appreciation for the historic I, creators that were making these. I absolutely do. Um, I was also curious that some of the um, descriptions, they're not very specific about where the locks go. And the examples, the extant examples we have, some of them have, uh, they're wound around three warps or five warps or four warps, and it's just very random. As I was weaving, I realized that the effect that has is that it makes it look more natural. It's not all lined up mm -hmm. and even. So that was definitely one of those things that you figure out once you do it, that there's a reason. Exactly. So that's pretty cool too. Some people Is there think else in our comments who's working on a cape or are people just joining us with all kinds of crafts. Let's see. If you are, if you are, shoot us a loop and pause your handiwork and shoot us a comment. Let us know what you're what kind of cape you're working on. Or if you're working on something else, let us know what you're crafting while you uh are you Last history year. bounding or are you modern? That is a good question. Oh, Crowing Hen says her cape cloth is almost off the loom, but she's worried she might not have enough fabric. <gasps> oh no. 
someone else putting the trim on their cape. We have a, cro ooh, a crocheted kerchief and a shawl that's being knit. That's very fun. I, I'm needing to knit something soon, I think. I feel the, the tingles of the knitting needles calling to me as the weather gets colder. I'm just grabbing a few of these. We have a whole bunch coming in now. Knitting a shawl. Okay, here, I'm too weak to be strong. Sock knitting, very nice, very nice. Not a cape, but crocheting a hooded scarf. I have had a hooded scarf on my to-do list for maybe like four years, and I just haven't found a pattern that I like. So if you're using a pattern, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce your username, Magix. But if you're using a pattern you love, can you throw it? Oh, we can't put, it won't let us put links in the, in the comments, will it? We can, if you put it, yeah, if it's a long link. If there's like a username or a model or something, you know, like who created the pattern? Let me know. I want to go, I'm going to, I'm on the hunt is what I'm saying for a good hooded scarf pattern. <laughs> Ooh, we have a crochet, a baby blanket. Ah, the truly Victorian pattern, yes. Very nice. Crocheted cloak. Wasn't sure whether I'd wear a cloak, although I'm inspired by the one you made last year. The yardage I just finished will likely be a sweater. <laughs> nice. Oh, there's... Truly Victorian cape, yes, very lovely. From Germany too, knitting a shirt. Not much of a cape person. Fair enough. You know, it's not, it's not for everyone. Nice to see you working through the live. Ooh, pumpkin colored crocheting a poncho. Oh yeah, it takes at least a, an hour. Yeah, I would say. Um, I will second that pattern, uh, Crowing Hand. That is what I'm working on right now, the free cape from Mood. It's a uh, Winterberry is the name. I have the pattern laying around somewhere. Uh, I'm using that pattern as well. And so far, I quite like it. All I have, though, is I just gotten it cut out and then I hung it so it could stretch out if it needed to, you know, you know, stretch at all, because it is basically like a skirt for your neck. Uh, so I, I, I quickly basted it together and threw it on a hanger and then it was hanging up on my shelves behind me for a few days and then um, I checked to see if it stretched out and I am just yeah working on the embroidery but so far I'm really liking that pattern so if anyone's wanting a free pattern I can recommend the one from Mood so far it seems to be quite nice. Ah oh, wild okay I'm gonna write this down. Thank Hollander by Weekly Handmade. Oh, and it's your third time making it. Okay, so it must be a really good one then. Well, if you see me with <laughs> with a hooded scarf in the next year, it's probably going to be that pattern. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, very nice. Represent the trans flag. That's very fun. <laughs> Pattern buddies, yes. Pattern buddies. Yeah, it's true. Another Swede, yes, making a cloak for LARPing in June. So her quota is all filled up, but starting on a hood soon. I love Gotland so much. It's one of my favorites. I have a whole basket of Gotland over here that I am just, oh my goodness. <laughs> Gotland wool is the most beautiful. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't oh, that amazing? Lovely. That is the breed of sheep that they used in the Lord of the Rings to make all the elves cloaks. None of that was dyed wool. It was all natural wool. That oh, like wow. drapey gray, almost like iridescent kind of silver. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the Peter Jackson ones. I'm not sure if they did the same for the Amazon new ones. But Gotland, I love it. I love it. It's beautiful, beautiful wool. And that's something I wanted to mention because we have so many people from Sweden here. Uh, this pile weave is, some people think that it is possibly a predecessor to Raya weaving, which is a very similar technique. 
So I'm interested in that. I have a whole bunch of vintage books on um, Swedish weaving because that's, I'm very interested in that. <laughs> right now I just want it to be done. Okay, you're at that part in the process. That's so relatable. I feel like Jillian might be there as well. Evie, are you at that point? Where you just this wanna... one? Yes. <laughs> There's no shame in that. I think it happens to the, all of us at some point. There's always a point in the middle where it just kind of becomes grind and you just have to keep pushing. For me, I have it's like two different stages. In the middle, I have the I don't know if what I'm doing or seeing in my head is going to turn out like right now, it's looking a little bit like poo. <laughs> and then after that, I start to see, oh, maybe it's actually looking good. But at that point, I just want it to be over with. So I have like two separate stages. Someone asked up earlier um, if or how many how many times I go back and forth before I add the locks in. So how many shots before the locks? <laughs> I'm not counting, actually. That was part of what fascinated me about the the documentation, the accident ones. It's just kind of random. Which also probably makes it look more imitating nature as well, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I feel like that's the case. And also from a weaving perspective, it's... Um, because the locks are staggered and the amount of material is all random when it packs down it's not like there's an extra bulk in specific areas that can make kind of like a column of thickness and can cause some weird rippling and and packing down issues so that is something else that the randomness is achieving so are you telling me people used to make entire capes with this process yes Yep. That must have been so costly. I can see why the king went for it, you know? Yeah. And the cool thing, too, is because it isn't like a sheepskin, it looks like a sheepskin, but it doesn't have all that leather in there. Um, it would breathe and it would be, you know, you get all the benefits of the wool locks, like they would shed water, it would be warm. But it would be flexible, it would breathe, it would dry quickly, you wouldn't have any chafing issues <laughs> having all that leather up against your skin, you know, if, if, if it, I'm not sure if you would just be wearing a cloak, that would be outerwear, but still, the whole idea of running around in sheepskins, I don't know, modern media has some weird ideas about things. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm learning extra things about the weaving. Shannon, are you learning anything interesting about mushrooms with your details of your stitches? Uh, not anything about mushrooms specifically. I mean, I've just confirmed that I'm very type A. <laughs> it's carrying over into my embroidery as well, but... Um, yeah, I've like got, you know, several stages of you know, had to do different little drawings of what did I think I wanted it to look like. And then because I don't trust myself to like freehand this, I then made like another little paper that has some stencils so that, you know, also because I want to mirror the same embroidery on both sides of my cape. So I wanted to make sure they were the same size and that everything symmetrical and spaced out so then I like took this picture and then transferred it on to like another piece of paper and then I'm just like cutting them out and I'm tracing them with chalk um I have learned that maybe this was like very over ambitious for my first embroidery project in terms of like most people when they started embroidering it's on white like fabric made for embroidery and you can draw on it but this is um, dark, and so I'm having to draw with my chalk pencil, and then it's, which means I can only draw like a very small section at a time because it then will wipe off, which is nice that it wipes off, but like I'm constantly, it's very fiddly. I feel like I, I chose a good one for my first project. <laughs> Let's just say that. 
<laughs> it's um going to look amazing though. Like it's really gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna yeah. grab some comments here. Yeah, this is a really, really interesting question that I want to know the answer to as well. Someone is asking if you have to keep if you have to brush it to keep it from matting over time. Your your collar or your you know weaving done this way. There we go. You know I am going to learn because that's one of the things like working with it, living in it, using it is definitely some of that experimental archaeology stuff going on for me. Um, this wool is scoured, and I think originally. They probably used locks that were not scoured, so they would have retained the natural lanolin and uh, shed water and just kind of operated sort of like how a sheep would naturally be outside. So there are some wool washes that you can get that redeposit some lanolin, and I'm thinking that I might just, once it's done, put it in just like a warm water with some special stuff to kind of re-nourish it because if I'm wearing it on a cape and I want to go outside and like walk my dog and it's drizzly or something like that it should help it to just kind of shed the water which is the point of it so I don't know I'll be exploring that I will explore I've seen old Norwegian Raya coverlets where one side looks like a sheepskin, the other has woven patterning laid on a bed, the patterning shows, and the locks are inside keeping you warm. So lovely. Yes, I think that would also take about as long as this <laughs> to create. But yes, having the locks on the inside would keep all of the um, pockets of air. It's very insulating, so that would be wonderfully warm. I once made a wool cloak with an artificial sheepskin lining. It stood up by itself. <laughs> took, out, <laughs> took out the lining and it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> that would <That's> be. <laughs> I have dogs, so I call them mats. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's the thing. If you remove the lanolin from the wool, it can felt or mat if it has enough agitation. Um, that is a thing that can happen. Uh, Sherpa goes on the inside to hold air pockets for warmth. Yeah, that's seen it around the world where people are staying warm. Air is insulating. Here's one for you, Shannon, from Crowing Hen. I once found white chasing paper for fabric for embroidery on dark, dark cloth, but can't remember where she saw it. Yeah, and someone else in the comments is also recommending wash away stabilizer, which I did think about, but this was kind of a stash busting project. So one, I didn't want to buy anything new. And also having just arrived in Montreal, I'm still actually not sure where the best place to go look for it is. And I didn't want to order off Amazon. So I um, thank you for confirming that I should in fact try it. And I do really want to try it at some point, but I just need to figure out where to get my hands on it. So that is on the list. That is on the list. Thank you for reminding me. Wash away stabilizer. Has anyone used it in the comments? I've never used it. It seems like magic. Speaking of magic, <laughs> this really seems like such a magical, you just wash it and it disappears. Does it really disappear? Even on like wool? I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid that there's gonna be like a little residue left over or something. So if anyone, if anyone down there can vouch for it, it will put my mind at ease. Oh, yeah. yes. Wash away is amazing. Okay. Oh, there we go. Nice. Wash away is amazing. Cool. Okay. I wanted right. to go back because we have some wisdom on the locks. So long as one end, the cut end is firmly in the cloth, it should, in theory, not felt too much. But it might compact if compressed and want fluffing from time to time. Yeah, fluffing. <sighs> I like fluffing. <laughs> it sounds very, very meditative. It's the... It's the uh, tactile experience for me. I love it. I love it. Finished a cross stitch pattern, a cross stitch project done on black cloth, and I highly recommend getting a project lamp. I got an Aunt Light table lamp on sale a few years back, and it was so helpful for seeing my stitches. I second that. I have an Aunt Light um, on my desk, and I find myself gravitating to it when I do cross stitch and embroidery stuff. I do more embroidery than cross stitch, but um, 
Yeah, yeah I gravitate to it because it's it's Definitely. helpful. I also, yeah, I do have one that I had been using it uh, sitting in bed. I've been putting, clamping it onto my, what's it called? Tab de Chivet. But nightstand, nightstand. I've been clamping it onto my nightstand when I work in the evenings and it is really nice. It has like an adjustable gooseneck. I think it came from Ikea, I don't know. But yeah, definitely that is fantastic. Especially cause yeah, I'm working on dark fabric. So it's really hard to see what I'm doing as soon as the sun goes down. The wash away I'm guessing. So Sane uses it for her embroidery projects. That's I would trust she has a lot of <laughs> embroidery projects, so I would trust that to be some experienced information. That is true. That is true. She does do a lot of embroidery from what I've seen. Ooh, a headlamp. Good call, growing hen. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> um Oh, a quilting store for supplies. Do you have quilting stores? After all? Do you know? Well, I don't think so. Uh, we have a big fashion district. So if you go on St. Hubert Street, then there's like a whole row of stores that it's like the fashion district area. There's like a lot of wedding shops and fabric shops for wedding dresses. But I've never, embarrassingly enough, I've never actually frequented any of them. Um, and I don't remember seeing a proper quilting type store. We have Fabricville, but um... Fabricville. I don't know why my mind goes to Seussville. I just. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair, fair, fair. That's why I love playing with alpacas. They're so tactile until they decide to not play anymore. Pets turn into a spit fest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think there's so many of us that just love the tactile experience of working with fibers. Oh, someone's recommending I check out the wedding shops for the wash away embroidery. That's a good idea. I'm going to give it a shot. Cool. Waste canvas, which is a counted embroidery fabric grid. You baste it onto your project fabric, and when you're finished, you dampen it and then pull out the threads. Interesting. But would it work if for, like, really complicated large blocks of embroidery? Like, I've got... Not only do I have, well, let me see, trying to find my camera. Not only do I have like large blocks of embroidery, but I also have like little spaces in between like my ferns and my little leaves. Can you really like pull out the threads when it's like that? I feel like that's a lot of work. <laughs> but I like the idea of waste canvas. You did, you did get me there in terms of recycling. That's kind of like my thing. I really enjoy maybe a bit too much recycle things and repurposing things. So I will have to consider that actually. That's that's tempting. Oh, the wedding show, sewing shops, cool. They use it for embroidery on the illusion lace. That makes sense. I can't, I can't talk about lace because I keep getting tempted to try bobbin lace. I don't need a new thing to learn, but I really want to try bobbin lace. <laughs> Talk about like a whole nother hobby and like uh, more supplies and like a, uh -huh. a time suck in the best way, but a time suck. <laughs> yes. And the cushion and the pins and the bobbins. But. Oh, it messed with the specialty stitches. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Instead of a headlamp, they have project lamps that hang around your neck and focus on your piece of work, and they're adjustable. That is very cool. I'm giggling over here because the first thing I thought of was, of course, taking my gooseneck lamp and just swinging it around my neck. <laughs> You may be a little bit ridiculous. Is bobbin lace like tatting? Um, there are different types of bobbin lace. And 
Um, no, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Um, bobbin lace, you have your threads on a whole bunch of different bobbins and you pin your lace onto a cushion and then you move the bobbins around in different orders to create the knots. So in that way, it would be similar to tatting except instead of with one strand doing the knots all around with one shuttle or, you know, maybe two shuttles, you can have a lot of bobbins, like a whole lot of bobbins. And the area that you work on typically would be a wider area where tatting you kind of go along at once. I hope that makes sense. I'm not very experienced with either. So Tatting is more like knotting with one thread. Bobbin lace is usually it usually has many threads interacting. Here. <laughs> okay, sorry. Someone just said bobbin lace reminds me of insanity causing macrame. <laughs> oh, it boy. might, yeah. Maybe it's more like macrame. Yes, and there is needle tatting as well, not a shuttle. The shuttles look so cute, though. They have all different colors. <laughs> How do you choose your hobbies? Oh, I go by which one's the cutest. The cutest I, I'm guilty of that sometimes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, me too. You use a S-twist or a Z-twist when you do bobbin lace. The S-twist and Z-twist, if you're not, if you're hanging with us, you're not a spinner. So that refers to the direction that your yarn is twisted. So if it's a Z-twist, then the twist goes clockwise. And if it's S-twist, the twist goes counterclockwise. Um, and so my general tip for S-twist or Z-twist which matters if we're spinning our own yarn because we can choose the direction that it's twisted. If you use a project and your yarn starts to split or come apart, then the next time use the opposite. So if you're using Z twist and it starts to split, come apart, unwind itself, then the next time go the other way and see if that holds together better. Cause, um, some of that comes down to just like individual bodies, like just how we move and how we hold our tools, how we interact with our things. Ooh, more pictures. That would be great. Beautiful bobbins. Oh no. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Cute tools. <laughs> Working with a textile collection at a local museum makes me want to recreate all the pieces. Oh, that would be. I just, feel that. that I oh. feel like that would be me. <laughs> so that much inspiration. Good. Exactly. Sometimes what looks the cutest is not easy. That's true. That's very true. Words of wisdom. <laughs> Everything else has been called large looms. What's, which, what's large? What are we talking about when we say large? Yeah, what kind of looms? Because a, a large counterbalance loom is going to be different than a large triangle loom in terms of mm. floor space. I'm curious. I have questions. Might need to advance my warp a little bit here. That's another thing I've been learning. Speaking of looms, because this traditionally would have been done on a warp weighted loom, but because I'm using a small rigid huddle loom, when I wind this up on the beam, I have all of this bulk that I need to like squish down in there to maintain my tension. So that's an adventure. <laughs> um, I wanted to say was that when you do bobbin lace, according to a friend of mine, you alternate between twisting the yarns in an S twist and a Z twist. And that creates the lace. 
thank you for clarifying. I didn't realize that. See, I like I said, I don't have all the experience with it. That's fascinating. Okay, we have a follow up on the looms. Only 52 inches, but I used to build and use tape looms. <gasps> oh, wow. Tape looms like like the the ones that have the treadle in the middle and they extend um, to the posts on both sides, like that kind. Those are fascinating to me. I design and register and weave tartans now exclusively. Husband, yeah. husband calls my studio the loomy bin. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm crocheting a shawl with fingering weight wool and the ply keeps splitting and I keep having to rip out and redo stitches. Any tips? Because this is causing me grief. The ply keeps splitting. I would probably, as you go, take your yarn and manually add some twist to it if it's coming apart. Once you're in the project, there's not much you can do. So to finish it with that yarn so it doesn't split as much, I would just grab that ball or cake or whatever and just manually add twist, work some of your stitches, and then manually add some twist to it. Um, I, I had that happen with some Noro. It was a single, and I was knitting with it. And I believe single, I believe Noro singles are S tw twist. Z twist. There's Z twist. I was knitting with it and it kept coming apart. So I had to add it manually to counter that. Tape looms are wonderful. Yes, a treadle tape loom. That is the coolest. I want one, but they're not very common in the United States. You can definitely find them in uh, certain areas of Sweden, though. I have just assembled a large loom in my basement, but not tried to weave yet. It's a bit scary. The width is 100 centimeters. Okay, that's a good, that's a good width. Oh, that's a good one. I would say go for it. Embrace the process. Whatever you get, enjoy it as the process. <laughs> And, and maybe start with a project that you're not like invested so hard in, like start with a test project, maybe, you know, that could be. Yeah, that's a good, that's good advice. I haven't had my big loom. I have a 52 inch width um, floor loom named Bertha. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't had her set up in our new house yet because we just don't have the room. So I don't know when we'll see Bertha again. She's a pile of sticks in the basement, the poor girl. Oh, no. But she's um, she's best for rugs, and I'm kind of more into cloth right now. So I have my... Um, my Leclerc set up. I named her Tina <laughs> because it's another one of those words that uh, in different places means different things. So the model of loom that she is is called Fanny. So I renamed her Tina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in some places, that's a sweet girl's name. And in other places, it's something else. <laughs> yeah. Who needs a dining room table? I agree. Just replace that with a loom. We can sit on the bench and eat. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Her sitting alone in the basement. <laughs> it's never going to make anything. Start smaller. Dressing them is intimidating, but easy once you get it. Yeah, moving every two years is hard. And I would say, too, just because your loom is very wide doesn't mean you have to start wide. You can start with something narrower and shorter. You don't have to warp 
you know, 15 yards with the full width if it's the first time that you're getting started because you're going to, you will make mistakes. Like that's just part of the process as you learn. <clears throat> and yeah, <laughs> Tina, <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I got the loom from a school that was selling out their equipment and um, it had some graffiti on it that said, I heart Tina. So that's how she oh, got her name. God. That's clever. That's very fun. Inspired by young love. <laughs> love origin stories. The things that have a story are always just so much more interesting. I think so. Do you have any anything with fun stories? I don't have anything. I don't have anything like super named. I guess the closest thing that I have would be my sewing aid, my third hand, which is my sewing bird. Okay, wait, I'm going to move the screen for a sec. So yeah, if that's going to make you nauseous, give me a sec. I'm not on a phone, so wait. Oh, trying to wear. There oh, we go. There so it is. She's here. So you clip your work in her beak and she holds it for you. And it's uh, you can put your pins here, your thimble goes on top. I'm gonna move the camera again. So that's the only thing that I have that really has a name. And actually that, I just put it to my viewers. We took a little a vote about what to name. Well, I wouldn't say her, but actually it's in the end. I am. Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> Hemingbird, excuse me. Ernest Hemingbird. So that's Ernest what. Hemingbird. Yeah. Other, I, I don't remember what all the other contenders were. There were some fun other contenders in there. Um, Robin was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in my community post. I can see if I can come up with, see if I can find the post. Because there were some fun names. But I think that's the only one that actually has any any good names in here? And you have a video where you gave your sewing bird some new life. Yes, I did. There was a whole video about that where kind of went into, I uh, did a lot of research on the history of sewing birds. Um, like there, or there were some fun little origin stories um, associated with it when they were popular. And I kind of, talked about the history as I re redid it. So, because um, it is an antique, uh, it has the year on it. I believe it's 18, patented 1853. It was probably from, significantly later, it was probably from, you know, the 1890s or something. Uh, so I did like carefully wash it down with a Q-tip and the, you know, some very gentle sewing detergent. And then the cushions were both a little bit well, very threadbare. So I um, I left the the barren threads on and then just carefully covered it with a coat of uh, velvet that I stitched on. And so now it's in it's in working order. It is an antique, so I don't use it too too often. I do know um, actually one of my friends just recently snapped her sewing bird. Uh, it was a reproduction. It wasn't an original antique, but she was using it and broke it right in half. So. <laughs> I'm going to be careful and probably not use it too, too much, but it is nice to see it restored and, and in good shape. Ernest Hemingbird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is too funny. Okay. Some of the other, um, I found the, the community post. Some of the other options were Lilo as in Lilo and Stitch, Robin, Poinçon, yeah, pinson, which is French, and it's a play on words, both for the word for finch, as well as the word for to pinch. And then uh, Ernest Hemingbird and Finchley were the other options. I love it. Okay, I am advancing my warp right now, and it's squeaking a little. I apologize. Definitely need to have room to work but because this has so much bulk usually I 
go a little bit and it just kind of keeps compressing each time I do a little more. So then I just have to keep adjusting it and tightening it as I go. There it is. Cool. Okay. Catching up on comments. Res your friend rescued your sewing machine from a neighbor who was going to throw it out oh, because it didn't have the power cord and pedal anymore. Oh, well, that's, that's easy to fix. That's such an easy replacement. Hey, you're crafty, right? <laughs> oh, I love those moments. That's kind of what we were talking about. Someone's like, oh, you sew. Do you want this, like, bunch of my grandma's antiques? Yes. Yes, I do, <laughs> actually. Lilo, the sewing machine. It means a part. I'm not sure how to pronounce it either. Sorry. Like it, maybe? Good suggestion. Advancing warp means progress. It means that we will finish this year. <laughs> <laughs> Lika. Lika. OK. So in Dutch, the, the double E is shorter than the English equivalent. Interesting. I am going to use my fancy technology because we can do this. <gasps> cool. Just a reminder, if you are working on a Cape Timber project, make sure to use the tag so we can find you if you share it on Instagram or Facebook and you use the tag. Yep. Um, He'll be able to find you. And if you are a regular viewer of mine, because this is hosted on my channel, make sure you also subscribe to Shannon Meeks because Shannon has fantastic projects. Got and some fun stuff for sure. That's a, yeah, got some fun videos over there. I, I kind of put a whole, um, my favorite videos anyway, is the first thing you'll see on my channel is like a list of, a playlist of the ones that, I prefer that I had the most fun with or that I'm the most proud of. So, you know, like the Corgi couch and the uh, Lord of the Rings Bilbo's robe. Those are both, those are both on that list. <laughs> you know, okay. That's a good point, Shannon, because if you could hand stitch that whole Bilbo's robe together. It wasn't I, all hand stitched though. I, I, there were, there were machines in there involved. You had a lot of hand stitching on it though. <laughs> That, that was such a fantastic, fantastic project. And yeah, I'm so excited about that. That one is still back in Minnesota at my parents' house. So the goal is to bring that back here at some point, uh, preferably before winter because it's very warm and cozy. So I would like to have it here for the Montreal winters. Yeah, definitely. Um, Where was I? Oh, there we go. I'm not sure if my internet is cutting out or if it's Evie's. Am I okay? My, you're frozen for me, but I think it might be oh, my. No. I can hear and see you. Okay, cool. My internet was, I'm just having bad internet today. So, but anyway, it is almost three o'clock. So did we want to slowly kind of wrap it up here? Make sure you do the YouTube things. Make sure you yeah. subscribe to Shannon. Definitely. I guess I'll, before we sign off, I'll show I didn't make a whole lot of progress. But let me. I got these. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She cut oh. me off. I was trying to make you bigger. I'm sorry. Oh, hey. Okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it's all good. It's it all good. These three little mushrooms on there. Those got added in just now. And then... I was working on these leaves down here, but as you can see, I have run out of room. So um, those are going to wait till I re replace this whole thing. So that's the progress I've made so far. If you want to see the finished cape and how it looks, hopefully that video will be done by the end of the event at the end of the month. So my Cape Timber cape should be out early October. Fingers crossed if I can edit efficiently. <laughs> It looks fantastic. My cape is, whoops, 
I'm catching my apron on stuff. Okay, here we're going to move a little. Hold on. Here we go. All right. So there's my cape. And there's the weaving. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so pretty once it's all united. I'm excited to get it on there. And then I have that other collar that's on there is uh, just for if I don't want to have all the locks at that moment, I can swap it out. So that's very clever. That's my plan. We'll see how that works. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's the fun of the project. Find new things. So awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. It was so much fun hanging out and chatting. Shannon, thank you for joining me here. And thank you for all the Cape Timber. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm so excited to see all the finished projects and everything. So keep those, keep up with those tags. Keep up with uh, thinking about if you want to send me some videos for the end of the event, and uh, keep working on those capes. Yes, awesome. Happy crafting, everyone. Yes. Bye. Have a great weekend. <laughs>